Hi guys, people have been waiting for 6.86 for weeks and weeks, and it is finally out. This cool guy right here is Arc Guardian, the Fractured Guardian, imported from Dota 1 and recently released to Dota 2. So this update is called the Balance of Power. Along with it comes 6.86. There's some armory changes and some other stuff for the actual client, but I won't really be talking about that. More so the gameplay and the new heroes and new items and whatnot. So if you want to follow along with for the exact details on the patch notes, go to www.dota2.com slash balance of power. Usually it's dota2.com slash 685, 684, 686, but this one's actually balance of power and 686 seems to have trolled some people. Anyways, the short and sweet of this video is there's a new hero. He is called Zet the Arc Warden, the cool guy that you saw on the first slide. Zeus has a new arcana and a remodel, so he no longer looks like Luigi the Plumber. There are massive terrain changes. It's very hard to like look at the patch notes and be like, oh, that sounds like it could be something. But I've actually gone into the map and checked out a lot of the changes, and it is very, very significant. We have a lot of neutral camp changes, including two new neutral camps. And there is a new rune called the Arcane Rune. There are four new items and, of course, a bunch of hero changes, as is with most of the large patches. And at the end, I will give overall patch themes and implications for the patch as a whole. So first guy, Zet the Arc Warden. If you never played him in Dota 1, which I didn't really do so, he has four abilities. First one is Flux. Uh, it's a nuke, but it only works if the target is by himself. Magnetic Field is a good defensive and offensive ability. It gives you and your buildings evasion and a ton of attack speed uh, to units as well, but it's on a pretty long cooldown. Spark Wraith is kind of like a mine, except it's visible to other people. Uh, so you'll summon a ghost to a position, and anyone that walks in the area, including creeps, will... Uh, take damage from that wraith and that a wraith will disperse and his last one is is definitely his most defining skill it's called tempest double it clones the hero and think it takes all his spells and items off cooldown when he uses it so you pretty much have two heroes and you want to get a lot of activatables including midas and necro and i couldn't really figure out a good way to uh, start off with videos in OBS, so I have uh, just some gameplay videos. So that's his uh, third skill. His first skill is slow, and this is his second skill, making this cool little bubble that people can uh, attack in. And this is a little clone, so you can cast like two of these bubble thingies. Pretty long cooldown on his skills, but he seems to be a massive pushing beast. You can't really see my items, but I have Midas and... Uh, Necro. So he is very micro intensive. I didn't really, I have, I don't think I've ever played against him, so I'm still not exactly sure what he does or how he'll change the game. But on to the next one. One of my favorite heroes, Zeus, has a new look. He actually looks like a badass now. He looks like this titan god of thunder. Just pretty awesome overall. As are most of the other arcanas that Valve makes. So that's good. Uh, and map changes. Uh, map changes, there's like a pretty long segment in the patch notes, but I'm actually just going to go through it in a video, which I have dubbed Juke Spots. So this is the Radiant Bottom Ward. As you can see, it's like opened up a lot more. There's a ramp right here. There's like a Juke Spot over here, a Juke Spot over here. This campus change a lot it's really far away from the t1 tower the t1 tower is recessed back uh, you can smoke through here now it's pretty crazy overall uh, this ramps much further back this rune used to be right here christmas christmas hat on roche um, you can't really get clipped anymore either like if you get clipped over here you can just straight walk all the way out without any tangos so that's kind of cool this camp has swapped with the other camp uh, the mid and the large camp this one i think went down a little bit but there's no longer uh this tree formation over here and it, this should make the dire off lane i think somewhat easier relative to the radiant before i think both of the off lanes had the creep 
way pulled closer to the safe lane tower so that makes it a little bit more difficult but dire got a lot more things that help him out there's uh some terrain changes to very close to the towers one to the bottom of the t2 side and there's a significant rework to this ward area over here this area actually connects now uh, this area is a lot more open so it's easier to push uh, there's some trees down there there's a new juke path to the left it's like a little bit more open so you can hide next to the t1 most of the changes are on radiant by the way and then we have this new spot that you can walk up so if you get cliffed you can just straight walk back down of course one of the most interesting things is the new neutral camps that's one of them right there right uh, to the northwest of the radiant ancients as well as a new ward spot right there that can see pretty far but not the rune uh, this ancient area got changed a lot this uh, warding area is just different and while you're doing the ancients uh, you can't see so much over here anymore because there are trees so moving on a little bit towards the dire side there are ancients over here there's a hiding spot right here which probably pretty useful will come in useful at some point. The side shop, or secret shop rather, got changed a little bit. And of course, here's the other second large change, another hard camp on the dire side. Some more juke spots, top T2 dire side. You can go in here, it's like a T formation. And let's see, there's more access to the side shops on both sides now. Uh, both sides, you can go on the south side uh, and there's also this north side path on the dire side. The dire neutrals almost didn't get changed at all. I don't, I don't even know if there was a change uh, to them. And then there's this tiny little spot over here to the west of the dire secret shop. And that's pretty much it for the terrain changes. But I try to go through them pretty fast, but it's a lot. It's going to take some time to get used to, and it'll have a fair amount of implications for how the game is going to be chaining pulls is really difficult now they made the distance in between the three bottom radiant camps like very far apart now uh, the mid pull with wisp is nerfed the troll range got nerfed a little bit and i think the camp's like a little bit more recessed into the jungle but i think it's still possible with the wisp and or sorry pudge and tiny the super long range hook and toss but probably not that big of a concern for ice rock right now there are two new spawn locations which is very very big uh, the dire off lane is easier relative to radiant i mentioned that i'm not sure if you can pull the hard camp to the lane it doesn't seem possible but we don't actually know the leash range yet or i actually don't know the leash range yet i probably should have checked it out uh, there's a new ramp to the southeast of the bottom rune to enter the radiant jungle uh, there are a lot of new juke spots newts are much stronger because they have more auras now like the small centaur has a magic resist aura so if you stack them too much then i think they'll actually be completely immune to magic <laughs> and stacking has been nerfed like more auras to make them stronger if you take them out uh you know five at a time and roshan gets stronger too not only does he have plus one base armor he actually has an attack speed aura so that liquid fire and other spells that slow his attack speed don't affect him as much and then next we have four new exciting items first one is fairy fire 75 gold gives you a 75 hp restore when you consume it um, passively it gives you plus two damage so an alternative to iron branch we're probably going to see a lot more different builds than you know circlets and branches and whatnot at the start dragon lance ogre club plus quarter staff disassemblable plus 130 range to range only that's the bonus no recipe required Ether Lens, you get the Energy Booster, the Cloak, the Ring of Health, and the extra bonus that it gives you is 200 cast range and plus 8% spell damage. Sounds pretty darn good. And that's, I think, 2300 gold. Iron Talon is kind of like a jungler's wet dream with Quelling Blade, Ring of Prot. Both of these are cheaper now, by the way. Uh, and 125 gold for the recipe active. There wasn't a name for it in the patch notes, but I'm just going to call it Quell. It's 40% HP creep nuke, 40% current HP. Um, and I have some video demonstration for those. First one, oops, that's the wrong one. 
Let's do Dragon Lance first, as well as the new effect from the GG branch. So that's the Iron Talon, 40% current HP. Um, you can just use a Tango and just make a tree. If you eat it, you get like double the length of your regeneration. Dragon Lance just improves your range by 130. As you can see, I can attack. If I drop it, I have to move a little bit closer uh, to attack. So that is pretty good. Seems like a lot more useful maybe on heroes like Luna. I think, who have pretty short range. Uh, fairy Fire, you just use it and you get this nice cool green plus 75 on you. And it is a five second cooldown. And then we have Ether Lens, which probably doesn't seem like that big of a deal for some heroes. If you have like a thousand range, 200 range isn't that much, 20% increase. But for things that are like melee or almost melee like coaling blade you see this tiny circle i pick up the aether lens and i hover over it again and it's huge it like almost triples the range and you'll have like ridiculous maybe like dismembers or uh coaling blades after picking up this item and i can like chop that thing from pretty much where the range creep is so that item actually seems very cool and uh useful so let's see Next, we have a new rune, the Arcane Rune. It causes all spell cooldowns to be reduced by 30% and mana cost to be reduced by 50%. Lasts for 50 seconds. It's caster's version of double damage, I suppose, although it's far more focused on efficiency rather than damage. But if it's less cooldown, you can actually do more damage. And it's a little bit more reduction than Octarine Core. People are saying that it's pretty imbalanced. I also thought Octarine was like super imbalanced when I first read about it, but it didn't turn out to be that popular. So reserve your judgment for Arcane Rune until you actually play a lot. So for the hero changes, we have three heroes added to CM. Earth Spirit nerfed his geomagnetic pull. You can't pull people unless you have your scepter. That's a big nerf. I think with that nerf, he's actually okay to be in CM. That was the thing that I would complain about the most. Oracle tweaked. Added a CM. Terror Blade, not tweaked, added a CM. And then we see six heroes removed from Captain's Mode, a lot of them with their skills replaced or reworked. Two passives replaced Death Prophet's Witchcraft, Doom's Level Death has been replaced, Faces Void, his Time Walk has been reworked. It's like a super short cooldown, you can dodge damage from it. And backtrack replaced by, I think, Time Dilation. If heroes have a skill on cooldown, it doesn't, doesn't, cool down anymore if he casts that ability which is pretty cool so he can kind of cc people now uh, lone druid synergy has been replaced with savage roar causing heroes to run back to their enemy fountain uh riki has the new added skill called tricks of the trade and he has been removed from cm uh blink strike has been reworked to the old blink strike and backstab has been paired with perm invis but he no longer has the hp regen winter's wyvern's curse has been reworked i shouldn't have said replaced it's been reworked a little bit uh so that it's more focused on the he primary target taking damage from heroes that attack uh, od's astral imprisonment has been reworked to actually do damage now but not steal int silencer's curse reworked so that if you cast spells you keep the debuff on you and you keep on taking damage but those two heroes are still in captain's mode other hero changes uh, that actually was not the focus of this patch it seems like strong heroes nerfed notables dazzle huskar tusk dazzle huge nerf on vision i think mana cost uh, nerfs to huskar i think his max magic resistance is 50 percent instead of 84 before it used to be like 98 so he takes so much more damage now when he's low tusk has been nerfed weak heroes have been buffed notables invoker gets invoke at level one faceless void uh, his time walk is new as well as his time dilation and pudge he heals on dismember without a scepter now on top of getting a cool scepter with pudge meat hook being super short cooldown and doing a little bit more damage quality of life changes random draft added to ranked so now you don't have to play ap boots cheaper give less ms so they're less mandatory i suppose uh, supports rejoice couriers are cheaper smoke is cheaper killing obs gives more xp uh, added a patrol command so you can pop smokes like we the bob ross gg branch can now pop down happy little trees that you can eat for 20 seconds chatting lmao now causes your hero to laugh who would not want that and then we have 
of course, at the end, patch theme. So these are things that have happened in prior patches and continue to happen in the current patch. Stacking in neutrals continues to be more difficult. That's a very evident one uh, before uh, we had limits. There was like a limit on stacks added. There's R's on creeps. Now there's like more or stronger R's on creeps and more distance in between camps is also something of note. Uh, Roshan also falls into this category of getting a little bit stronger slash more difficult. Vision from skills is harder to come by. This includes uh, track from prior, prior patches uh, as well as Zeus from prior patches, Storm from prior patches. Now we have Ember, Slardar, and Dazzle. All their visions got nerfed. Uh, standard of life for supports keeps getting better and better. So hopefully more people will want to play it. Before uh, we saw the patch where you give less net worth when you're killed, you get more XP from kills relative to your teammates. You can split wards, um, dust got a lot better. Now there's a cheaper courier, cheaper flying courier, and cheaper smokes. So you can actually buy more items. Proliferation of early slash mid game item choices. Now your early game, like, do I buy mangoes? Do I buy GG branches? Do I buy fairy fire? Who knows? And mid game item choices too. Who knows? Glimmer Cape and Four Staffs used to be the thing. Mech 2 now. Do you want to get Aether Lens? Do you want to get Dragon Lance? Do you want to invest in Iron Talon instead of going for Battle Fury? Like, you know, all these things are going to be a lot more difficult because there's so many more items now. Scepters continue to give very unique bonuses. For example, BB Goo. If you get Scepter now, you just goo everyone <laughs> in 600 range. That's kind of cool. Uh, LC's. Ags is no longer the worst in the game. Now it makes you and your target immune to outside damage for the duration of the duel, but it's no longer an infinite. Um, Magnus has a AUE and power aura now. I believe it's 900. That's kind of crazy. Uh, balance of power is the, is the name of the patch. OP heroes become weaker and weaker heroes become more OP. That is just standard for every patch. But it's not obvious because some... Uh, game designers would just buff the weak heroes to make them strong, which would lead to more power creep, or just nerf the OP heroes and make them all weak and have kind of a reverse power creep. So that is not Ice Frog's philosophy. Less and less UAMs. Uh, Oof no longer is a UAM, as well as Silencer's Glaive. So that's kind of cool. Remember that Huskar got a lot stronger because his uh, spear was no longer a UAM. So this you know, could be could be a thing, and less RNG. We saw a little bit with like ogres multicast and CK's uh, CK's stun being more smooth, as well as rune spawning on both of the sides, which sounded super crazy at the time. Now uh, we have Daedalus being less RNG, and um, yeah, a just a little bit more or less RNG overall. And then new patch themes, we have Range Cleave. That is a thing. Before we saw Wind Rangers get Battle Fairy, that was like years and years ago because there weren't any better items. Now you will actually have Range Cleave. Mag Scepter and Drow Scepter. Drow Scepter is not really Cleave, but it's kind of close to Cleave. Uh, passive abilities have been reworked to active abilities. Backtrack, Synergy, Witchcraft, Kunkka. And uh, before there was like a testing of Mortal Strike, which got reverted back to just crit on Wraith King, and I wasn't sure if it was going to continue, but and now it seems like there's a firm stance. Passives should be changed. Uh, there's a new stat on Rod of Atos called Accuracy, which makes you guaranteed hit 40% of the time, which is pretty strong. I actually thought it was like reverse evasion or first or just reduction in evasion but accuracy is not as strong as that but it's still a cool stat nonetheless new types of cc savage roar is similar to fear effect and ag's ghost ship uh pulls heroes in but it doesn't disable them i think i think it's a displacement but no disable i haven't actually tested it out but uh, it seems like there's new types of uh, cc and another one that i forgot to mention is that we're seeing more and more um abilities being based off auto attacks which might not sound like that big of a deal like drow's marksmanship splits into two arrows we see riki's tricks as our trade which i think attacks a hero or attacks in an area every second for five seconds it might not sound like that big of a deal that these are like actual attacks as opposed to you know 50 damage hits uh, but it makes a 
big deal when it goes into scaling for the late game. That's why Ember was really strong or is really strong because his main steroid ability is just straight scales off attacks, which is sleight of fist. And now we see tricks of the trade kind of similar to that and drow marksmanship too. So we're seeing heroes scale a lot better into the late game uh, because of that. So that's something to consider when a uh, hero might be buffed in the new future so that's it thanks for joining me guys hope you enjoyed the review of dota 2 6.86 the balance of power now go have some fun play the patch looks to be a very good one